everybody Steve back with you in the shed and today we're going to be looking at what will be our next project over the summer months when we've completed the 1200 scale build of the hood which is currently uh, running on the channel so we're going up a scale uh, and something relatively more simple uh, in the form of Revel's 144 scale flower class Corvette the current boxing is for the Canadian ship uh, Snowberry but the model could be built in theory in any number of other vessels. There was something approaching 300 built and most of them were of the configuration uh, in the Revel kit. Uh, I'll be building it with the Pontos uh, set. They do a specific uh, update set for the Revel 144 scale kit. That's on the way and we'll have a look at that when it arrives probably in a week or so. But in the meantime, we're just going to have a quick look at the uh, sprues, see what we get in the box and start to think ahead about uh, the build, probably starting in June time. So we'll get over to the bench, we'll crack the box open and let's see what's inside. OK, so here's the kit in Revel's usual uh, end opening box, which I know draws uh, an awful lot of criticism from fellow modellers. I'm not a big fan of uh, these end opening boxes and I think that's uh, a view shared amongst a lot in the modelling community. Um, they're not particularly useful uh, for storing the model as you progress through the construction and it's more difficult to find parts because you're constantly having to pull uh, all the sprues out of the box so I think once this is open my usual uh, method with Revel kits is to get the sprues out and leave them out. So this is uh, 500, just over 500 parts listed uh, in the kit. We'll take a look at the dimensions uh, in a moment just to check whether or not we've got overall accuracy with the length and beam. But let's see what uh, we've got inside. We'll take a close look at all the sprues separately. So here's the uh, kit. We've got one, two, three, four, five bags all together. So we'll go through each of those uh, in turn. But the first thing I want to do is just to tape the hull and decks together. This is a relatively uh, simple hull structure. So here we are, we've got the hull sides and as you can see it's moulded full hull and there's no provision for the waterline mark on the inside for those of you that uh, want to build this as a waterline model. So you'd have to work out where the waterline was on these vessels. Shouldn't be too difficult. And I think this moulding is from 2016 so it's relatively new but it doesn't look like a four year old mould. The plastic is very very shiny. It reminds me of some of the early uh, Eastern European uh, mouldings from probably the early 90s or late 80s. It's quite odd. It certainly hasn't got the finish uh, that we've probably come to expect on new mouldings these days. You can see on the inside we have these holes which originally I thought were for braces, uh, cross braces to stiffen the hull uh, when it was being constructed but I've had a quick look through the instructions and there's no provision for that at all so it's a bit strange why we've got these features here. You could maybe use them to make your own braces out of some sprue or some uh, rod cut to the correct length just to stiffen the hull up but uh, it's a bit of a puzzle is that and there's such they are quite thick mouldings and when we get those thick mouldings there's usually uh, a trace of a sink mark on the outside and there is on this they're not too bad and they could probably come out with a coat of under a coat of primer and a little fine sanding but uh, it is a 
It is a strange thing why those are why those are there. We'll check on the dimensions in a while. What I want to do is just cut out the main components and tape them together just to see how they go. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the detail parts after that. So, so we can uh, tape the whole together, I just want to get the deck parts off and the uh, central bulkhead which lies on here as well. So I'm not going to do the build obviously but um, I just want to cut these main parts off and see how they go together. So just five uh, parts in the kit will have us uh, with what will look like a flower class carver on the bench. So let's just uh, get that tape together and see how it goes. So the first thing to see is that uh, we do have a warp on these parts. So the stem just wants to open up. It shouldn't be too much of a problem um, when we get this glued up. Okay, I've just taped those main components together. Uh, there was or is uh, a little bit of a warp on my sample here along the edge, but I think when glued up that should be fairly easy to pull together. So I don't think that will cause us any problems. So you can see that the transom on the kit is a separate part here and that's to allow the depth charge rails which were mounted here at the stern to discharge the depth charges uh, through the transom at the back here through some doors. So that's quite a manageable size uh, really and quite a big scale so some of the parts I expect will be fairly easy to handle. So this could be uh, quite a good kit for someone who's not built uh, many ships before uh, or doesn't have a lot of space uh, to display the models. Proof of that will be how easy the rest of the model goes together. But uh, that's not too bad a start. In terms of dimensions, uh, we've got an overall length of 43.9 uh, stem to stern which is uh, slightly uh, oversized. Uh, these vessels were 62.5 metres long, uh, which actually scales out at 43.4, so it's uh, about 5 mil uh, too long. Uh, in beam they were 33 foot wide, which scales out at just a fraction over 7 centimetres and this is, if it was tight, it's probably just going to be exactly right. So the, so the beam is good, the model is probably just a little bit too long, but nothing to worry about. I don't think uh, that's very noticeable. I haven't compared uh, the shape to any plans yet, because I don't have any as yet. I'll have to gather the references before we start the build. Okay, so let's take a look at the sprues. This is the C sprue, and you can see it contains the uh, parts for the ship's stand, rudder, and some of the uh, bridge structure here. The ladders really are representative of the standard of moulding uh, on the kit as a whole. They're quite heavy. Uh, it doesn't matter in my case because I'll be replacing these with the Pontos H brass ladders. But you can see how uh, thick they are. Uh, they might look okay when they're on the model, but uh, at 144 scale, I would have hoped for something a little bit better than that. There's very little uh, flash on these parts. There's just a trace you can see around the back of the rudder here. But it's nothing to speak of really. So that's uh, not much on that sprue. This uh, space here is where the uh, bulkhead was that uh, I fitted. 
This is the uh, D sprue, the main parts of which are for uh, the bridge structure here or the bridge deck where we have uh, the Ehrlichan positions here. These uh, structures are supports for the bridge wings uh, that lie along the uh, side of the ship. The propeller which does look a little bit heavy. I think that uh, could benefit from just a little bit of reshaping just to make it a little bit finer. And we've got the bridge parts here with open uh, windows and there are some clear parts which we'll have a look at in a while which uh, are used for the windows for these. Again that's flash free. The ladder is to the same sort of moulding standard as the first ones that we took a look took a look at. There is quite a warp on these sprues. I don't think it affects any of these parts but it just gives away the general moulding quality of the kit where you can see how there's a twist in those. The uh, e-sprue contains lots of detail parts. We can have a look at the winch here. And again, that's uh, quite heavy, a bit of flush on it, needs some clean up. It is uh, usable, but it's not the best moulding. These are the anchor chains here, which, which would be easily replaced with some uh, proper brass and lots of other detail parts. The davits are quite good here and the jack staff here. Quite heavy but uh, all these parts will need a quite a bit of clean up. I don't know what all these parts are obviously it's uh, it will take some time to work out and we'll uh, go through them obviously when we come to the build. Got the F sprue here. So a couple of obvious parts. This is the funnel cap. Uh, we've got one half of the funnel here and lots of other detail parts. This is the uh, main four inch gun. Uh, which you can see is in two halves. It was just a single barreled uh, mounting and the barrel is in two halves with the breech. So that's going to need some careful assembly and clean up. The shield is very plain. It's featureless really. The only detail on it are these doors for the vision ports on the front. There's no rivet detail at all on that, They're perfectly smooth. So uh, that could do with some work, either scratch built detail on it or some etch brass overlays on it, something like that. It does need something. The puzzle about that is that's a featureless shield for the main gun, but we have this shield here which I think is for the pom-pom, which has some rivet detail on it. So it's very strange that uh, we get it on a small part like that, but not on one of the main features of the ship. These other parts here are all uh, trunnion mountings for the rest of the weapons. The ship carried, I believe, some uh, twin Lewis mountings, which is what these probably are. I'm not certain, but uh, they're either that or searchlight mounts. This is the uh, G sprue and this carries the majority of the rest of the superstructure. So this is the midships uh, deck superstructure with the skylights here and that's built up from the deck part and two separate bulkhead parts which will run along the side of the uh, deck house. 
the other half of the funnels here as well. We've also got the platform for the 4 inch gun which has a little bit of nice detail on it. And this is the mounting for the pom-pom uh, which sits amidships. You can see how thick the shield is on this part and again it's an area where I think a bit better effort could be made to make that a little bit finer. I mentioned when we did the tape up at the beginning that the transom was a separate part and that's this here. So we've got the two doors for the depth charge rails which uh, deposited the depth charges through these uh, ports here at the transom. I think the kit provides for the doors to be uh, built either open or closed. I'll probably be having mine open. The uh, galley flue is here and that's not hollowed out. There's no slide moulding technology on this kit but uh, that'll be a simple enough job to open the uh, galley flues up. We have most of the railings on this sprue as well, which are these, and again they're quite uh, heavy and will need quite a bit of clean up. There's no flash on them to speak of, but the mould seam at the side will need a bit of work on them. So uh, that's not going to be easy to clean up. And as I said, they do look uh, slightly heavy to me. So this is the eye sprue, and we get two of these. So obviously a lot of duplicate parts on this. The kit provides the vents in the form of these two halves. I think there are 12 or 13 of these to be made all together. You can see them all here. And they'll be quite difficult to clean up on the inside to remove the seam on the inside. Uh, so that's quite a task for 13 of those. There are some 3D replacements available for the vents uh, for the flower class in this uh, scale. So, so if I place another order with MicroMaster they might find the way onto my shopping basket. This is one of the stand uh, arms. We've got the uh, depth charge racks which is basically a box type rack here with a separate row of depth charges which will fit in inside and again they're moulded in two halves so you can imagine when they're joined together there's quite a bit of clean up to be done at least on the top surface of those uh, to make them look presentable so quite a bit of work there. We have uh, the hedgehog mortars here so they were in four tiers, the other two are obviously on the other duplicate sprue. And one of mine has lost its uh, pin at the back. So either I'll have to make another one of those or I can probably hide it in the middle two tiers so that uh, you won't see that at the back. So it's not too big a deal but I don't quite understand how that's got broken. This was packed with another sprue but uh, they didn't appear to be crushed at all. And at the end of the sprue here there's uh, the ship's boats. One of the two ship's boats. So these look to me like 16 foot dinghies. And I think somewhere there's a set of oars. Which I think are these parts here. The ship uh, carried two types of Cali rafts. Uh, this one here, which is the most recognisable form of Carly raft. These parts here are depth charges, uh, which were stowed along the uh, side of the deck at the aft of the ship. And staying with the depth charges, these two parts here are depth charge throwers. So obviously they were loaded in and catapulted the depth charges uh, along the side of the ship. 
the rest of them as i said before were deposited through the uh, stern of the ship through the transom doors the last of the uh, non-clear parts has the different shaped square akali raft here if that's what they were called i'm not certain that the square ones were akali rafts but uh, it's the same sort of thing and some more detail uh, parts this is a hose reel here or a hose reel and these parts here uh, fitted to the tops of the uh, depth charge racks i'm not certain what they were for but uh, some part of the mechanism presumably so again there's two j sprues like that in the kit this is the uh, clear sprue as you can see I won't take it out of the bag just to uh, prevent it getting scratched but uh, these are all the windows for the bridge side here and the skylights have separate round windows so they're quite a nice addition they're pretty clear and free from distortion they should be quite usable and at this scale they're probably a good substitute for using um, some sort of acetate which might not fit uh, into the uh, holes provided as well as these plastic parts so they're again are probably quite useful so that's all the plastic the kit also provides this uh, thread which is for both the rigging and I think some elements of the rails as well I'm not sure how usable that is. It's not particularly fine. It's not smooth. So it's quite a lot of fibre in it. I'll be using uh, elastic thread for the rigging on my model. Um, I'm not so sure about using that. It might be possible to smooth it out using some PVA drag through your fingers. Um, but that's one for the sewing basket, I think. Okay, so let's take a look at the instructions. This is uh, Revel's new type of instructions in colour. And those of you that have built Revel kits before will be familiar with the layout of these. I find uh, Revel instructions slightly cryptic uh, in terms of some of the terminology and directions that they use. Um, but I suppose you get used to them eventually. They do look very busy and that's because of the number of languages that are used in the instructions. There are 21 different languages here. Uh, so obviously that takes up quite a bit of space. We've got the painting guide here and another thing that's typical of uh, Revel is their use of uh, these paint colours. And these are all references for Revel's own paint range. Uh, and fairly typically they're using quite a number of mixtures. Uh, so in the, an example of that is the pale blue that's used in the camouflage, uh, where Revel would have you mix uh, Lufthansa blue with uh, white in a 4060 mix. I'll be uh, probably mixing my own shades for the model when I come to do the painting. One thing that I do like in model instructions is a part uh, layout. And with the parts numbering system in Revel kits being so haphazard, these parts uh, breakdowns do at least help you locate some of the pieces that you're going to need. We have a total of 101 assembly sequences, plus the painting guide at the back of the manual. And again, these are fairly well laid out. Uh, these new Revel instructions are a big improvement on previous uh, attempts. Although a hundred sequences might seem a lot for a model of this size, is in this case I think that's helpful because it doesn't bring too many parts into play in any one sequence. So it adds to the clarity of the uh, instruction layout and the drawings that we're looking at here. Revel do use a number of sub-assemblies. So for example in this case, this is the uh, depth charge rack being built. And altogether there are five build sequences where just three or four parts are brought into play at any one time. So overall I think that's a reasonable uh, way to approach the instructions. Uh, fewer parts but uh, obviously that means that you've got more assembly sequences. The drawings are nice and clear, they're nice and accurate. And once you get used to these symbols uh, you shouldn't have any problem putting the kit together. 
At the back of the manual we do have a fairly simplified uh, rigging diagram. The actual rig on the uh, vessel was obviously a lot more complex than this uh, and as I think I mentioned when we were just checking out that rigging thread that was provided it's also intended that you use it for uh, these railings around the four inch mount position and the stem of the ship here and some along the sides. The last page here has the colour diagram for the model with the painting guide and the colour call outs here which refer back to the uh, paints to be used uh, which were looked at at the front of the instructions. For ease of construction I will be doing the Snowberry but as I said if you've got the right references it's quite possible that you could uh, build any number of the class uh, from this kit. I believe that some of the class were slightly extended forward uh, in which case that would be a, a bit more of a challenge to get out of this kit but there's plenty of options for you, for you to work on uh, from the rest of the class that looked exactly like this so I'm sure you'll find something that uh, will take your fancy if you don't want to do uh, what's provided in the box. We have a small decal sheet which is printed in Italy, I'm not sure who the printers are and it's quite uh, matte but thin, I think they're going to be quite usable they'll look okay under a coat of varnish so we've got the pennant numbers and the draft marks here, three sets of draft marks got the ship's name uh, which lies alongside the aft part of the superstructure and in the case of the Snowberry there was this uh, this cartoon picture for the side of the four inch gun okay so that's Revel's 144 scale flower class Corvette in the box I think I'd sum it up uh, as being a sort of intermediate quality really. The, some of the parts are fairly roughly moulded. The detail in each individual part isn't so good but I think overall when it's all put together uh, out of the box it should make a nice model and they won't take up an awful lot of space in the display cabinet either. So it's a good choice uh, if you are limited for space uh, and you want something of a larger scale than the 700th or even 350th scale. Uh, models out there on the market. The kit should build fine out of the box I expect uh, but with the addition of some aftermarket it should make a really nice looking model. I'm going to be adding the Pontos set uh, to this, uh, the Pontos set specifically designed for the Revel uh, kit and that's on its way over to us now from Australia so it should be with us uh, in the next couple of weeks and when it does arrive I'll do an inbox review of the Pontos set and do a comparison of it with uh, the Revel kit just to see how it's going to improve some of those uh, less detailed parts uh, on these plastic sprues. I'm hoping to start the model in June. Uh, that's if uh, the plans for the hood that's currently in progress uh, go to plan. I hope they do. I'm expecting to finish that in May. So we'll be moving on for a fairly short summer project uh, with this Corvette. So for the rest of the week uh, I'll be carrying on with the hood build part 29 coming up this week in that series. So I hope you can join me for that. Otherwise I'll be reviewing the Pontos set when that arrives so hopefully you can join me for that as well. In the meantime everybody uh, thanks for joining me for this one. Stay safe and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.